So now let us look at the excretion and release of substances in plants. We have seen in animals, right from that uh, protozoa to the higher uh, uh, phylum like mammals, birds. So they have the different kind of excretory organs to send the waste out of their bodies. But whereas in case of plants, do they have excretory organs? Do plants excrete the waste materials? So we cannot find any special excretory organs in plants. But even in the body of a plant or a tree, waste materials are produced as like animals. Then what happens to these waste produced in the plant or a tree? The waste that is produced during metabolism is converted to some other kind of substance and it is stored in the different parts of its body. Sometimes they are excreted by keeping them in different parts like their roots or their leaves or the fruits. So when the fruit after ripening, the fruit falls down from the tree. In the same way the leaf after ripening, after yellowing, it falls down along with the waste and the plant is get rid of out of its waste. In such a way plants they have some special mechanisms by which they convert the waste materials into different other compounds and excrete in different ways. Sometimes they may not excrete the substances. They may be storing these substances in their body and using it for different different purposes. So these substances, the waste materials are converted to some other form and used for different purpose. Generally in plants, oxygen is also produced as a waste. If you see plants that contain chlorophyll, green color plants, so they carry out photosynthesis and they produce oxygen as a waste. This waste is released out into the atmosphere through stomata. Small holes present on the leaves and lenticels. Pores, holes or pores present on the stem. So through these the oxygen is sent out. Non-chlorophyllous plants, heterogeneous plants which cannot prepare their own food which live in dark. So in such plants carbon dioxide is also produced. So that is excreted through the stomata again. In such a way the waste gas like oxygen or carbon dioxide are released out through stomata and lenticels. Then how about the other materials, other compounds that are produced as a waste in their bodies. So the waste that is produced in the plant, the waste is stored in the seeds or fruits or leaves or root or in the bark. Sometimes these materials are converted to some special materials called as raphides. We get some bitter taste, some bad taste when we eat certain parts of plant. Like if you eat the seeds, they are bitter. Cannot eat seeds of some plants. So because they contain some chemicals like graphites. Certain plants like say for example yam. If you eat yam, you will get some kind of itching sensation in your throat. It is because of graphites present in the yam. So in yam plant, the waste materials are stored in that yam. So in such a way, plants, they convert their excretory materials into some other salts or some other form and they are stored in their body parts. So these chemicals, whatever the waste materials are converted to chemicals, these chemicals are useful for the plants in defense sometimes, defense. Defense against some animals. These chemicals are stored in the seeds and fruits of certain plants. So that seeds and fruits are bitter in taste. Sometimes if any animal eat the seeds or fruits, the animal may die also. And animals may not show interest in eating that because of the presence of these chemicals. In this way, the plant can protect its seeds. So by that, the seeds will germinate into new plants. In such a way, plants can convert these waste materials into some other chemicals which help in defense. Sometimes they help in new, uh, symbiosis, mutual benefit. Symbiosis. We know that leguminous plants, they have root nodules. So these root nodules, they secrete some kind of chemicals which will attract the rhizobium bacteria. So the rhizobium bacteria in turn help the plant and plant helps the rhizobium bacteria. There is, a, there is a mutual helping, understanding and cooperation among the bacteria and the root nodules of the leguminous plants in fixing the nitrogen. So to attract the rhizobium bacteria, the root nodules are secreting some substance that is a chemical substance which is a waste. 
So the waste is converted into a useful substance, some other metabolite and it is used either for defense, protecting itself or sometimes it is used for other purpose like uh, symbiosis. So many of the plants they secrete many materials. We see that a rubber plant, latex is produced, some kind of alkaloids are produced, various kinds of materials are uh, produced from different plants. So plants they produce various kinds of biochemicals. They synthesize various biochemicals. So these biochemicals are basically categorized into two primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. What are primary metabolites? The substances like we know that plants prepare carbohydrates by using sunlight, carbon dioxide, water. So such carbohydrates, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, amino acids, these are all the primary metabolites which will help the plant for its growth and development. So the biochemicals which help the plant in its growth and development are called as primary metabolites. The chemicals which are not essential for growth and development of a plant, they are for some other purpose. We call them as secondary metabolites. So we uh, discussed that plants they produce some kind of substances for defense, for protection and the wastes are uh, kept in their body parts in different different forms. So those are all secondary metabolites, not the primary metabolites. Now let us see what are the secondary metabolites that are generally observed in plants. Some of these secondary metabolites they have very good commercial use, means they are extracted from the plants for various applications in our day to day life to, while prepare, to prepare certain medicines or certain kind of beverages and many other industrial applications are there with the secondary metabolites of various plants. So now let us look at the secondary metabolites, they are the alkaloids, tannins, gums, resins and latex. So all these secondary metabolites, they have a very good commercial uses in the market. So first let us discuss about the alkaloids. It includes like quinine, nicotine, morphine, cocaine, reserpine, uh, caffeine, nimbin, scopolamine and pyrethroids. So these alkaloids are nitrogenous compounds and most of them are poisonous. Of course, even though they are poisonous, many of them are medicines. They are used as a medicines, painkillers, antibiotics or antiseptic and at the same time insecticides are also there in these alkaloids. So let us see that quinine. Quinine is an alkaloid which is uh, used as an anti-malarial drug and nicotine. So the nicotine is used as an insecticide, this is found in the leaves and morphine and cocaine, these two are painkillers but sometimes this nicotine and morphine, cocaine are misused as some kind of um, um, uh, malpractices for using uh, morphine and cocaine. So these are obtained from opium plant and uh, these are used for uh, nervous stimulation and they are considered, uh, they are uh, called as a drugs and it is offensive against the laws, the growing and uh, using the plants for other purposes. But in the medicine they are used as a painkillers, morphine and cocaine and reserpine and caffeine. This is found in the ca coffee plant. This is, this is also considered as a painkiller. So the caffeine is a stimulant, nervous system stimulant. At the same time it also uh, acts as a painkiller. The reserpine, this is uh, used as a drug obtained from Rolfia serpentina plant. It is uh, used as a medicine and a nimbin. This is obtained from the neem plant, Agyderecta indica neem plant. So this is found in the leaves, bark and seeds of the neem tree. So the extract, it contains a nimbin which is used as an insecticide and antiseptic properties. And the scopolamine, this is a sedative obtained from Dothra plant and pyrethroids Insecticide, it is obtained from the chrysanthemum plant. So these are all the different kinds of alkaloids which have a good commercial value. Now let us look at the tannins. 
So the next one tannins, tannins are the dark colored substances, mostly the brown colored substances which are obtained from the trees and plants and these tannins are used in the tanning of leather that is adding dark color to the leather. So they are used in the tanning, cassia and acacia are the trees which contain large amount of tans and uh, gums, acacia it has got a gum, gums are obtained from the trees that is the secretion from the bark. So by making certain marks on the bark, the gum is extracted, which is water soluble and it is a, used as a adhesive. So these gums, they absorb the water, they swell up by absorbing the water. So these natural gums are obtained from plants like tree, and trees like neem and acacia. And these gums are used in the preparation of medicines, preparation of food. So certain, uh, these are the natural gums which are used in the preparation of certain food item or in that preparation of a certain kind of medicines. So they have good commercial value. And resins, and resins are obtained from the gymnospermic plants like a pine plants. They have special resin passages through which the resins are secreted. So in this way resins are collected from the gymnosperm plants. Gymnosperm plants, naked seeded plants, example pine. Pine, we find cones, they have passes for this uh, secretion of resins. The next one is latex. So latex is a milk kind of white kind of material that is obtained by making marks on the bark of tree. Mostly we see this latex in the rubber trees, the secretion, the milk of the rubber tree is collected and made into rubber. So latex is used in making many uh, rubber products or commercial products. The latex that is collected uh, from the Jatropha plant. The latex that is collected from the jetropha plant is used as a biodiesel. The latex that is collected from the rubber plant is used to make rubber. So in this way, these are the various secondary metabolites that are obtained from the plants which have very good commercial value. So we have seen that plants, they are not directly excreting, but they have various methods in which various metabolites are produced and they are excreted in different ways. But in some cases, in certain plants, the roots excrete the waste that was observed by a scientist called as a Brugman. He observed that the roots of an apple tree is excreting some waste materials into the soil. So in a field, if apple trees are grown in a garden, after four or five years, the soil becomes useless for the growth of the tree again, even though large amount of fertilizers are added. So after four or five years, the soil is full of that excretory materials that are left by the roots of the trees. So this is an ev evidence, this shows that certain plants, they directly excrete through their roots, the waste into the soil. Now let us look at the excretion versus secretion, the differences between excretion and secretion. So excretion is sending the waste materials out of the body, which are not essential. If their presence causes some problem, such materials are sent out of the body. Secretion means producing some substance which is useful at some other place of our body. Say for example, saliva. Saliva is not excretory material, it is a secretion, saliva. Saliva is secreted into the mouth for the process of digestion, for some purpose it is secreted. Movement of substance from one place to another place in the body is secretion. Excretion means that is the material that is uh, prepared and sent out of the body. Say for example, urine, tears, sweat, these are all under excretion. Secretions, saliva, hormones, enzymes, these are all the secretions. So excretion is a passive in nature, whereas secretion is an active in nature. That is, uh, useful substances are produced and the movement of useful substances from one point to another point of our body. Here, the useless substances are eliminated out of the body by excretory systems. Even in plants also, we observe certain plants like apple, their roots excrete the waste materials out of their bodies. And in plants also, we see the secretions. What are the secretions? We see the resins and gums, tannins tannins, all these are the secretions in plants. So this is the major difference between excretion and secretion. 
So, in this lesson, we have studied the mechanism of excretion in both animals as well as in plants. And we also studied the human excretory system in detail, the structure and the function of human excretory system and the chief excretory material urine and its composition and the functioning of the kidneys and what happens in case the failure of kidneys. So all these uh, different things related to the excretion we have learned in this chapter.